Hey folks, uh, Damon at uh, Black Warrior Lures. Let me turn down the, that's how I keep track of what I do, but uh, turn it down, this helps me. But anyway, Damon at Black Warrior Lures, we're gonna build a jug fishing gaff today. You know, I've been having a hard time fishing for cats all summer, so we're gonna go back to an old technique, fishing jug, just old school jug fishing, but one of the difficult things in jug fishing is trying to reach over side of the boat to grab jugs is difficult so what we're going to do is build us a jug gaff out of this old uh, piece of uh, fishing rod here uh, most likely all of you guys have something like this sitting around in the house and you're not doing anything with it so I'm going to show you how to make a fishing gaff some of these methods and techniques you will have most of you who've been through my catfish rod building course right here on YouTube have seen a lot of this already and that's all we're going to do so what you need is some old uh, the handle end of a fishing rod that's no longer in use. It could be something four foot long, it could be something shorter like this, it could be whatever you want, just anything like this. And then you're going to need some hooks, whatever your big hooks are used when you're fishing. I'm going to use an old circle hook, um, some scissors, I'm going to use a fly tying threading vise, uh, threading bobbin fly tying bobbin is what I use for a lot of my work and then I'm just use some super glue I'm not going to worry about the epoxy and some of these uh, wire nippers and so let's get going first thing is to get our hook this is on my box here hopefully you can see all that see we got plenty of old circle hooks here and uh, yeah, come on here. Just gonna get one of these circle hooks. These are old Mustad 3366. No, uh, these are Eagle Claw brand hooks. Uh, L197Fs. Right now, you see, great thing about a circle hook is that you, once something's hooked, it's going to stay hooked. What I don't want is that sharp point on there. So what we're going to do is just cut off, just cut off the tip, just a very sort of tip of it. Take one of your hooks that's all dull. Make This is a stainless steel hook, so that's, you know, another thing we're looking for. And just take your nippers and be careful. Hold it here because it'll, if you just do it like this, it'll, it'll shoot it across all creation. See, there's that. And so there's that hook there. And then the barb, we're going to just pinch down with uh, some, some pliers, although we could just do it here. There we go. We just crimp that down like that. So crimp the barb and just cut off the very nip tip. And then what I can do is I can get my, you can get a grinder and you can grind or sand that flush if you want or you can leave it like that doesn't really matter the point here oh come on hope that yeah good didn't get down in that poison ivy point here is uh we're gonna mount this bad booger right here on the end of this thing it doesn't have to be perfectly square or anything but we're gonna mount it here just like we would the uh, eye of a uh, of a fishing rod you know we're going to generally put it um, on the bottom side so you can line it up. Put it here on the bottom side. Forgot to get my tape. Um, tape's the best way to do it here. And we're going to just put it on there like that. So let me run inside and get the tape. All right, so here we go. I don't know if that'll make it in the video or not. We're going to tape it here. We'll start out at the end and work our way down. And just you tape the eyelet on, and that'll be just fine for right now. Um, just got to tape that down, and you can reposition it once you get the thread and things like that going. Now, now what we can do is set it up here. Um, I mean, most of you got some rods that have broken tips and stuff on it. I mean, you you know. And so what we're going to do is just wrap a few times here. It's the same technique for those of you who have done my um, 
catfish rod building course. It's the same. It's exactly the same technique that you've seen me uh, do on any number of projects here. So now we're gonna bunch these up, and the thread is now locked in. It's the same wrap, same technique, same all that stuff. Now the question is, is do I use epoxy or do I use super glue here? I may just go ahead and mix up some epoxy just because it's so familiar to me and I know it. I know it's going to have the strength. I know it's going to work and things like that. And, we'll just, and so this is basically being lashed down on here. Uh, another way to do this part is just to stretch that out. This is where a rod wrapping machine would actually be of uh, use so um, I, hope, I hope you can see that you know it's kind of hard for me to know what you can and can't see so we're just going to start wrapping it like that just letting gravity just hold the line straight and we're just wrapping it wrapping it one right after the other touching turns using our fingers just to sort of bunch up the turn so that they do touch. Um, I hope I have enough thread to finish this. It's running low. Again, this is old nylon backpacking thread back when I used to make a lot of outdoor gear and tents and tarps and backpacks and stuff. I ought to do a video of some of that. You know, every now and again. Oh, come on now. Give me all this trouble. Uh, we just may go mix up some epoxy. Yeah, we may very well not have enough uh, thread for this. See how we're starting to run out of thread? But we'll see. Got plenty of thread, I just don't have enough on the spool. Oh, come on. Oh, resting on the grass. Tell you what, let's move up. There we go. Now I can dangle the way it needs. I can rest it on my leg and I can just work like this. And this is exactly how I build my rods, too. I mean, just by hand. Don't have a machine. I mean, I'm still hoping and working on the wooden fishing rods that I've been talking about off and on over the course of most of this back in the spring but uh, I have a couple of other pieces of equipment to buy but I decided to buy a, uh, a Helix 5 uh, sonar I think we'll be all right on terms of the length of that I bought a Helix 5 uh, SIGPS sonar unit from Humminbird um instead and so that's gonna have to be put on hold probably even until 2016 even but even so um even so um it, it's still on the works i'm probably gonna i'm about to buy me some lathing tools i'm probably gonna start building some jugs that may be the next video um, wooden jugs out of some old pine logs and things but anyway uh, what we have here now you know it's, it's secure now I and mean, we could remove the tape now it wouldn't be a problem and the thing I like about this is because the eye of that hook is uh, what will keep this from slipping out if we can get the tape off. So that tape holds pretty well. Okay. So there's that. Okay. And so there's that. And we'll just finish wrapping this on up.
go. Uh, I forgot my finishing piece, so let me go run and get that. I have everything set up in the house, and I don't like recording in the house because the light's not right, and it's just a lot easier to record outside. And then it's just messy inside, so. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I'll be right. Okay. That's how I do it. I'm going to work my float, so just put that on there like that. Just a loop of kite string is all it really is. Uh, this is, you know. Now, ideally, what I would have is a true gaff hook, something that's really heavy duty that would, you know, just kind of slip over the end of that or slip down into there. And, you know, I think mudhole.com sells gaff making supplies. Um, but again, you know, the hook is all I would ever need for making a gaff. We're just going to try this now. This is how a lot of the products that I make come about. I just have a need and and I just look around the house and see what I have laying around and seeing, okay, well, what could actually meet the need? Um, that's where I want that, yep. Yeah. You know, what can, what can I just put together? So we don't have to buy a bunch of stuff and then I test it out. It works. People seem to like it and I just offer it and let and people just buy it you know it's just that's just kind of how it works and so uh that'll come on sir well i'll tell you what we're just gonna pull that sucker under there like that i'm just gonna let that go and be happy and that's it it's the the thread is locked and secure now okay and then there's that uh I don't feel like mixing up any epoxy, so I'm going to lather it up with some super glue and let me go get a paintbrush. Super glue, just old everyday super glue. I'm just going to, oh, last thing I want to do is get it all on my shoes and stuff. Looks like oh, that's plenty enough there. And then we're gonna just, as long as it kind of gets saturated down into the threads, that's what we want. And this will be dry before you know it, really. And uh, we'll just And I would have done the same. I mean, the the, uh, the epoxy would do the same thing, but super glue would, sets up so much faster. Oh, there's my bell. It's time to take a break. I have this thing called the Pomodoro technique that you, you work 25 minutes, take a break. Work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break. It helps me. Cause the medicine I take makes me tired and sleepy and and so it helps to be able to do that. And so I need to stop now, but we'll finish out this video and just let you guys uh, see, and then I'll take my break. Uh, but anyway, th there, there we go. And, um, and that's all I'm gonna do. And that'll sit up, we'll just let that sit up, you know. And so when we're out jugging, we wanna get a jug in, bam, we can hook it there, we can hook it there, and just pull it in and get grab hold of the jug and pull it on in. Just to give us a little extra reach so we don't have to be bending over. Now, you, know, you can do this with any old piece of fishing rod you got like this, old rods that have been broken off, can't use them anymore. Take you one of your big hooks, uh, you know, five odd or bigger, you know, you know, tip up, you know, crush down the barb, you know, you know, um, crush down the barb and uh, clip off the tip. Or the, the point you got yourself a nice little hook but you can all you want to do is try to hook the line there 
you just want to hook the line that's underneath the jug while it's in the water and just pull it forward and so there's my uh, and so that's how to make a catfish jug gaff talk to you later see us